going to talk a little bit about when I felt what I felt and basically to give a little bit of timeline and lead up to where that went next. And yeah, just kind of talk through it. And so um, I felt, I felt, I discovered, I felt this mass in my left breast either the end of December, it was December time frame, or early January. I am, um, or I was breastfeeding. I was breastfeeding exclusively at the time. So it was a one night, it was one night after Matea had nursed and my boobs felt pretty flat, deflated, soft, you know, anyone that has breastfed babies know what I mean when I say like, you know, it was pretty much empty, dry. So it was a good time in my mind. I, I thought it was a good time to do a self breast exam. I, um, I am a person that does self breast exams often because I do have a family history of breast cancer. I have my mom's sister had breast cancer. She was diagnosed in 2001, passed away around, well, not around, March, March of 2005. My mom did not have breast cancer. She had melanoma, but from what I've learned, a lot of times there are genes that kind of link those together, mutations and genes that can link those things together. So my mom had melanoma. I'm not sure exactly what age she was diagnosed at, but it was before I was born. She was 36 when she had me and she had melanoma or found the area on her thigh before she had me. So it was, you know, years, years, years ago. And she ended up passing away in 2001, April 10th, 2001 is when my mom passed away. And from what I've learned, just over the years, it was basically because her melanoma had metastasized and it went to her liver. And by the time she presented with symptoms and concerns that there was nothing that they could do, she was not going to make it essentially. So yeah, my mom passed away, you know, from breast, oh, not breast cancer, from skin cancer. My grandmother also had a lump removed. She ended up having a lumpectomy and got radiation and some lymph nodes removed on that side. She was much older though. So like my grandmother lived to be 93, 94 years old. And when she was dealing with the breast cancer, it was probably around the time of when my mom and my aunt, well, my mom passed away and my aunt passed away. So sometime in that timeline between 2001, 2005, I believe is when she possibly had gone through it because I remember being in New York and remember her using a machine that would help with the lymphedema because she had developed lymphedema in her arm. So in terms of when she was diagnosed for just educational purposes, because it's important, uh, she would have been early 80s or 80s, I would imagine. But still, there's again a family history, and there are other cancer histories on her, my grandmother's side of the family, and my grandfather's side of the family. And so for me, cancer was one of those things where, of course, I am praying um, continuously to be the one that breaks the curse. Um, now those prayers are the one that overcome it. But prior to the diagnosis, for me, you know, being the one to break the curse because it is something that has claimed several lives of family members or several family members' lives um, in, my, in my lifetime that I can remember. And so I was not one that, you know, skipped breast exams, basically. I, uh, I made it a point to do them in the shower, I made it a point to do them in the beds. I was very, I am very familiar with my breast in terms of, you know, how they feel and everything. And so that night when I felt what I felt, I said, oh, wait a minute, what's that? Hold on a second. And I compared it to the other side and did not find it on the other side. And so at that point, that's when I was like, okay, wait, so that is something I feel. And I don't feel it over here. So let me keep feeling it. So I keep feeling, keep feeling, and it's still there, of course. And it's, you know, trying to figure out how does it feel, but I can't really describe it. It's just something there. 
So other thoughts that kind of went through my head is, well, could it be a clogged milk duct? Because I'm, you know, a lactating mom or a lactating woman. And even though she did nurse really well on that side, maybe something did get clogged, maybe the, the feeding before that or something else. And maybe that didn't break up during that session. So is it a clogged milk duct? Is it possibly beginning stages of a mastitis because the duct has been clogged and I just didn't realize it's been clogged this long and maybe infection is starting to happen. So I'm going through these thoughts in my head and then I also come across another thought. Well, what if it's not? What if it's not a clogged milk duct? What if it's not mastitis? Then you know it could be something else. It could be that, that cancer, that, that C word that we don't like to use. And so for me, having known several women in my circle that were diagnosed in their 30s, for me, I knew it wasn't gonna be something that I was gonna wait a long time to figure out what it was. Um, specifically because I have a classmate from college who was diagnosed in her early 30s, who shared and continues to share her testimony every day. And I've, I've had this conversation with her and thanked her because I also heard her voice in my head and heard her her words in terms of how she thought it was a clogged milk duct. They thought, the doctors thought it was a clogged milk duct. The, the, even when she had the ultrasound done, they were still not thinking it was cancer. Um, at that point, her mammogram was negative and they thought they were just going to pull some fluid off of a mass that's in her, a, a fluid filled mass, and to discover that it was not fluid and that it was cancer. And so I heard, and I later discovered more details about it um, just as I'm going through my process, but initially with what I felt in me saying, clogged milk duct mastitis, I also heard, well, what if, you know, what if it's not? What if it's not? It could not be a clogged milk duct because hers wasn't a clogged milk duct. And we both are from almost the same, the low country area. Like for me, it was like home. This is so close to home. And so I thanked her. I have thanked her. I've thanked her for sharing her testimony and sharing her experiences because it was that that made me, I feel like move faster in my timeline of giving it time to figure out what it is. So I gave it some time. I gave it a few weeks actually. And you know, it's not going away. I can still feel it laying down, I can still feel it when I stand up. Um, and so at this point, I even possibly considered that it could be hormones because my baby is eating solid foods, which means she's intaking less milk, ideally. So it could be hormone related because my cycle could be about to start. And so, you know, I even kind of waited on that for a while, but no cycle came, no cycle came no mastitis symptoms, and it's definitely not a clogged milk duct because it wouldn't have been clogged that long. And so I called and I made an appointment. And the appointment was set for February 9th. That was the earliest they could get me in. I called and um, you know, told the phone receptionist that I wanted to come in for a breast exam because I felt a mass in my left breast. She um, was gonna get me on with you know the earliest, the fastest provider. And I requested an MD, don't get me wrong, MPs are amazing, like awesome. I have several, several, several friends who are MPs that do amazing things and can very well handle any type of situation um, in their respective fields. But just in, in my case, it, I don't know, it was just something in me that said, let, let the MD, do this one, let's, let's get the MD, let's request the MD. And so they put me with a provider, or put me on the schedule of a provider for February 9th. 